Firefly Blue Ghost, separation confirmed. This is seen as an AOS standby. We have acquisition of signal with the Blue Ghost lander. My name is Harriet Hunt. I'm a mission operations engineer at Firefly and a flight controller for Blue Ghost Mission 1. My name is Ryan Cole. I'm the engine manager for the Spectre engine. That's our RCS engines on Blue Ghost. I'm Jackson Lebeck. I'm a flight director on Blue Ghost, and this is our first weekly update since the launch. So in preparation for launch, there's really a lot going on, but it was actually quite silent because we couldn't communicate to the spacecraft yet. Um, I think everyone was pretty nervous, but at the same time pretty excited because we've worked years and years to get to that point right there. And it was sort of just like a monumentous moment that spacecraft is separating from the vehicle. She's all by herself, she's alone. We know Blue Ghost is alone, and it's up to us to make sure that Blue Ghost gets to the moon safely from then on out once we can get that acquisition of signal. So I think a lot of engineers prepped in their own way, but really at 10, 11 p.m. local time, we were all focused and, and ready for that separation while we're watching the live stream. We're watching Ray and all of the NASA personnel speak about Blue Ghost as well, which was kind of nice. We got to relax before the storm a little bit. What's, are you what ready? Are, what, what are your last words to Blue Ghost 1? My, I'm just, you know, thank God we're finally here. We're so excited. It's been four years. You know, this is what we built this lander to do, to go to the moon. So I'm, I'm excited to start. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Let's go! Oh my God. <laughs> our landing site. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get back to these. There, there it is! It is. <laughs> yes. Wow. All right. That's perfect. There it goes. Let's go to the moon. To the moon. We expect the vehicle to power on right as we separate. And from then on, it's doing a normal power on like we would see in the clean room when we would do our simulations. So everything boots up, the S-band radio boots up and is attempting to communicate to our flight software and then vice versa down to the ground station. Now you can see that in the video, we're pretty much still from the get-go. And so within, I think it was 10 minutes, we had acquisition of signal. It was just such a exciting moment for the team because on their dashboards, they saw telemetry. What that's telling us is, Blue Ghost is alive, Blue Ghost is ready, and Blue Ghost was healthy. We were getting great telemetry down, and we actually went through our subsystem checks and our procedures to get it commissioned a lot quicker than we did in simulations, which was just amazing. So as a flight controller, you're responsible for sending all of the commands to the lander uh, and also coordinating with the flight director and all the other subsystems to make sure that we're running through uh, our steps in the procedure. I was a flight controller uh, for the first shift after launch and separation, so I sent that first no up to the lander uh, and getting the, uh, you know, receipt of the command, that end item, seeing that we did have acquisition of signal and we, we successfully sent our first command was a big sigh of relief for me. I think that was the most uh, shaky my voice was over the loops, just saying, you know, we got a command received, we're good to, we're good to go. Did you, uh, did you prep that line or did it just come out, come out naturally? <laughs> no, I didn't prep anything for it. So commissioning is really just making sure first the vehicle is healthy and safe. And then also, we sort of do checkouts for each subsystem throughout to make sure that everything is working nominally. We also did a lot of payload checkouts, so we have 10 payloads on board, and so we turned all of those payloads on, turned their power channels on, and we did health checks. Um, and we got that data down to the ground pretty quick, and that immediately got synced to our uh, customers, you know, NASA and, and the rest of the teams that made those payloads. Uh, and that went very successfully. Uh, we had no hiccups. Uh, all the payloads got their data, and, and we were on our way. It really felt like we were uh, not only ready for this, but our customers were getting uh, what they wanted as well. 
Biprop priming is a big deal for the propulsion team especially. This is the first time that most of the plumbing has seen propellants. Um, and it's the first big checkout in that sense that we do. It's also the first time that we raise uh, pressures in the tanks to their run pressures with propellant. Um, so by the end of Biprop priming, we have the system in a state that we say we are prepared to do our first uh, Delta V maneuver. We're prepared to fire the engines for the first time. In mission hops during the procedure, you could probably hear a pen drop in the control room. Um, but we, we went through the procedure slowly, we went through the procedure carefully, and everything proceeded as expected. The A1M maneuver is very important to the mission, but it's not actually critical. Uh, cr critical meaning we could not perform this maneuver, and from an orbital dynamics perspective, we could still land on the moon. But what the A1M maneuver buys us and what the success of it means is uh, it's a very effective engineering checkout of the system. Since it's the first time the engines have all fired together and the engines have fired commanded by this GNC system that we've built, it lets us step through individual operating modes of the system and learn a lot about them very quickly. So Delta V is one of the ways that you can measure how accurate a burn on orbit is. Um, it, it's, it's literally saying from the start of the maneuver to the finish of the maneuver, the velocity of the spacecraft changed by this amount. We got the amount of energy out of the engines that we expected. Um, so saying that we finished within two millimeters per second uh, change in velocity of the spacecraft is, is, is kind of an absurdly small target that we were able to hold inside of. When we completed A1M, uh, we decided to record a video during the burn, and it took a while to downlink, but once we, uh, once we got it on the ground, right at the end of the shift, you know, we all stood up and, and watched it on the, on the big mock screens, and I think it's just kind of crazy to me when we're doing the simulations. All of the Argus Cam photos are like of me standing at the rack set, <laughs> like doing the simulation commanding. Um, so it's crazy for me to, you know, get to stand up and see, oh my gosh, we just did that. And that's the lander in space. <laughs> I think the moment that we completed the maneuver was really special for everybody. Um, I, I don't think anybody quite believed what they were looking at for the first few seconds. It, it took a minute for that to sink in to say, oh, oh wow, we really, we have data. It says we fired the engines. We, we actually fired the engines and everything looks great. Everything looks healthy right now. Um, so I think we had a minute to be super happy that this happened and then really focused back in fast on, okay, we did something dynamic for the first time. Is the system healthy? We need to get, we need to get back into kind of our nominal safe state pretty quickly. Yeah, so we did technically 15 mission simulations, um, and I was actually the simulation director for those. Um, and so, you know, many of those were week-long simulations where we're coming in working like 12-hour shifts. Um, so one week of them was 24-hour, you know, turnaround time. A lot of times simulations felt very exhausting, but the preparation is really just a lot of experience that gets you prepared for that actual day. Uh, and I don't think you notice, but when, when you're sitting on console right now and the Blue Ghost is actually flying, those mission simulations are invaluable. I told all the operators at least twice that my goal, at least through the mission simulations, was to make sure that your worst day on console is during a sim, and so that everyone is prepared for basically the worst. And I think we can definitely see that all of that hard work through those simulations uh, has definitely paid off. So this was Blue Ghost's first in-space hypergolic engine that we've made. Uh, the propulsion team at Firefly has a lot of experience building launch vehicle engines, and there's a lot of pretty hard-won lessons um, from all of those development cycles for the engines on Alpha and uh, the engines now on MLV that we were able to kind of draw on to help with this. Um, but the team as a whole has never worked on uh, a hypergolic engine, a very small engine. We're only about 45 pounds force compared to Reaver, for example, which is closer to 45,000 pounds force. And it's been about two years since the first time we fired the very first development engine on this program. With lessons that Firefly has learned on how to make valves very well, to be able to produce an engine quickly that we can get on the test stand fast, 
break a few things on the test stand to figure out where our limits are and get back on the test stand as quickly as possible with some tweaks to the design to work things up as fast as we can to a workable solution for flight. The team that's been working on this engine for the last few years has, has been very, very small. Um, I don't think we've ever had more than five people working on the engine full time. Uh, bits and pieces of extra support coming in constantly. It's, it's a small team, it's a very young team, and for many of us, myself included, this is actually the first program that we've worked on that's existed long enough to make it to flight. The accomplishment there and the lessons that we've learned, I, I'm hugely proud of, and I think everybody on the team is super proud of as well. I think for me, being on console during this mission is just kind of like a dream come true, um, especially getting to sit as a flight controller and send those commands uh, and work with my flight director, Jackson, who, you know, we've been working together through all the simulations, and I think that we're a really good team. I've enjoyed every hour that I've sat on console since launch uh, because I'm learning just so much more than we did in our simulations uh, because it's the real deal now. There's not a technical project that I've worked on that I'm more proud of where it is right now, and there's not a team that I've worked on that I'm more proud to be a part of.